is Leah. Who is this? This is Lilo. <laughs> well, we know that that's a lie. Of Doom. How are you? Uh, I'm pretty good. I feel pretty good. Uh, so, did you... Costa's wife. I was just calling to speak on his behalf. Can I ask another question? Can I get another one, please? Did Did you see... Did you see my Acosta video? I did. Okay. Did I didn't get to see all of it. I did... I saw, like, the first half of it, though. D don't worry about it. Did, do you believe that Jim Acosta attacked that young lady? No. No. So you would agree with me that that was a doctored video that was circulating. I never saw the doctored video that everyone is talking about. I saw the original um, press conference. Right. So everybody keeps saying that, oh, they doctored it, they doctored it, they did whatever. I don't know what they did to it, but when I watched the press conference when it was originally happening... There was no doctoring, obviously, because it was live, so. Yeah, well, there's another video, I think, cycled initially by Alex Jones, which the White House then picked up and cycled, where they had it, they, like, sped it up and, like, highlighted it so it looks like he karate chopped right, her. Right, right. Oh, God. And it was like, <laughs> oh, my God, they, you know, they attacked this poor, this poor little white lady. Mm -hmm. And in yeah, in no, I would not say he physically attacked her. That's a little, you know, I can't stand Jim Acosta, but I'm not, I'm rational enough to say that at least. Yeah. <laughs> Damon Safe says it was a, ju it was a judo chop. <laughs> okay. So talk. Okay. So Meshuga, Meshuga is saying that Acosta clearly used physical force. You got to call me up, Meshuga, because I think you're wrong, buddy. Okay, so, uh, okay, Leah of the Village, talk to me. What what, what do you have? What's, what, what do you, what, what's the problem that you have um, with, with the whole situation? I think it's just being a little bit blown out of proportion, for one. I mean, Jim Acosta, is, I don't know why it's him in particular, but Jim Acosta, ever since... Trump became president has been on this crusade to challenge Trump any point in time he can. I've watched, I think I've watched literally every press conference that has happened, even since, you know, back when uh, Sean Spicer was the press secretary. Yeah. And this is something, this is a behavior that Jim Acosta has displayed multiple, multiple, multiple times. But isn't it the role of the media to, to be a challenging voice to the, uh, to the... There's no, there's no problem with the media being a check on the White House and the president and that kind of thing. That's fine. It's to a level that no other reporter does. There's 49 people in the press room every day, and he's the only one that makes these kinds of scenes. Well, there was 150 reporters at the press conference that we're talking about, and he's the only one that made this kind of scene. I mean, it was just a little ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, I said that Acosta was accosting Trump. I mean, he he got his pound of flesh. They were talking about the you know Trump's in my opinion, irresponsible use of the term invasion. And um, he, he got that in there and he, he, he went back and forth about it. He made his point. And then he started talking about the Russia investigation again, which even I, quite frankly, I'm getting tired of hearing about. And well, yeah. Trump answered his question. He said what he said. And it, that was it. Colossus, it's time to move on. And he refused to move on. And to your point, there's multiple people there. So... I said in the video right. that Acosta was accosting Trump. Like, he was obviously antagonizing him. And he did he, he did make himself the story instead of being a exactly. reporter who just reports a story. Which he not has. Supposed to do that. They're not supposed to do that. A, a very historic, you know, a, a habit of doing, going back, you know, like I said, the past two years. He's 
done this repeatedly. So I think Trump finally got sick of it, and they revoked or whatever his uh, his pass. And all that does is just make it not him not allowed in the White House. I mean, I don't think that's an unreasonable reaction considering the way that he behaved. That doesn't mean he can't still cover the president outside of the White House. But yeah, but aren't he's not allowed in the White House? Aren't you worried? Aren't you worried when you have a president who has multiple times said that the media is the enemy of the people? Even in that press conference where he's he they asked him again and he doubled down in that very press conference. He said, "Yes, when you do fake news, you're an enemy of the people." <laughs> Then he goes on to the other guy, and the other guy goes, well... Right. I, I, Fake news media is the enemy of the people, and he's repeatedly said there are plenty of reporters that he knows that are fine people, and they do really good work, and there's the fake news people ha, that, has he Has he ever said anything on the... But isn't it true, though, that every time Trump... Anytime a media person disagrees with Trump or fact checks Trump, he calls it fake news. Like anytime there's anything negative about him, doesn't he always say it's fake news? I I wouldn't go that far, no. No? So like I, I, do, I wouldn't agree with that, no. Do you have an example? I would say every single time. Well, like w- w- one to ten, how many times does it happen where Trump hears something bad in the media about himself and he calls it fake news? Like Eight out of ten, seven out of ten. See, I don't know because I don't listen to the the kind of crap that he talks about as being fake news. I don't listen to it because I, it's so obviously. Um, I wouldn't go so far as to call it fake, but I know what he means when he says fake news. I think they take a story and they twist it to whatever narrative they want to tell yeah but to me it it, it happens coverage how much coverage have you seen on cnn and cnbc about the whole prison reform well i know and that that's why as soon as i heard about it i stopped what i was doing i was Mm -hmm. actually in the middle of my other job and i stopped what i was doing because i'm like i'm gonna talk about this yeah because I know with our show, there's gonna he's gonna have plenty of sound bites where we can be critical of him, and we're going to be. But he did something am- he did something amazing yesterday, and I don't care what his motivations are. He did something in two years that that Barack Obama did not do in eight. Mm-hmm. And exactly, a lot of folks don't realize this, but there is a ton of really bad feelings toward Obama in our community because. He didn't do a damn thing for us systemically. Well, yeah, I was going to say, and Obama, out of the two of them, had more reason to do it because, you know. No, he had no reason to do it because he had black voters. I think all the black people that voted for Obama were expecting him to make their lives better, and that's not what happened. Yeah, Obama Obama really didn't make any effort to secure our vote. He didn't feel the need. Even Puff Mm -hmm. Puff Daddy, the rapper, all these rappers were making all these... Obama songs when he got elected, you know, mm-hmm. and then Obama right. didn't, he didn't do a damn thing. I mean, look, it's, disappointing. he would do individual things. One of us would get shot and get on TV. Trayvon could have been my son, but the systemic issues that we've always talked about, mm-hmm. he didn't, he, he, he did. Sorry. Mm-hmm. You know, he, 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 he commuted a, a thousand sentences. Great. There's freaking millions of people in the, in the prison system. Yeah. <laughs> right. Oh, he's the first person to visit a jail. So what? Mm-hmm. Like, who, oh my God. who cares? Like, I don't even want my son in there for Obama to visit him. Like, right. keep my kid out of jail. I don't right. give a damn about right. Obama coming to visit my kid in prison. What the hell? Anyway, I, I'm, I'm, uh, I, I'm, 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 I'm missing, I'm, I'm going, I'm missing the point here. Here, I, I, I got to push back on you, Leah. Go for it. Have you ever heard Trump say, hear a criticism about himself and say, you know what? That's right. I need to change that. I've, oh God. Since he's become the president. I've, I've heard a lot from him. <laughs> All right. Let me ask. Let if me I'm ask. trying to pick out one time where I can remember him. Admitting to a criticize a criticism, I can tell you. Yes, I think there. I can. I think there are a few instances that I can think of. I I can't give you specifics though. But I yes, I 
I would say there's limited, a limited number of instances I can recall. I just can't recall exactly what the specifics were. Okay. All right, sis. Now, let me ask you another question. I need you to answer honestly, okay? Always. If you answer this, if you guess this question correctly, you will win $10 million in cold, hard cash tax free. Okay? Oh, sweet. All right, so I'm going to give you a scenario, and I'm going to give you option A, option B, and tell me which one is most likely to happen. Are you ready? Yep, go for it. Reporter says something negative about Donald J. Trump. Trump response. What is the most likely response? Response A, you know what? I need to look into that. That might be true. Or response B, more fake news. What is more likely to be Trump's response in that scenario? Out of those two options, I would pick B, but that would not be my uh, my answer. Okay, so what's what's your what's your answer? I think typically when people accuse him of things that he doesn't think he's done wrong or that he's guilty of, he's very quick to push back and say, no, I had absolutely nothing to do with that, or I didn't mean that, or blah, 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 blah. Yeah, but here's my point in asking that question, because originally what you said was he directed the enemy of the people line at fake news. But then right. even you being an ardent Trump supporter would admit... I am a supporter, of course. Say again? I am a Trump supporter, yes, of course. Yeah. So even you, an ardent Trump supporter, would admit that he he would be more likely to claim fit he he would more likely to fall back on the fake news angle anytime there's a criticism of him than to introspectively look to see if the criticism is valid. So don't don't you see the concern well, there? No, 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 no. You asked me what his reply would be, and I'm not saying I'm, I out of those two very limited options you gave me, that would that's the reply I would pick. But it depends on, you know, there's a lot of variables that go into it. I don't think he's going to, he's the type of person to, to go, oh, yeah, I need to, you know, reflect on myself and try and figure out what I need to improve on. No, you're right. I don't think that he's the type of person to do that. <laughs> but Right. You said he would, mo well, well, what would the third option be? Because to me... The third, the third option is what I said that he typically does. He says, well, no, that's not true. And, you know, I haven't done that or I didn't mean that or blah, 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 blah. He's quick to explain either his original intent or whatever the case may be. Yeah, I, I, I just think for me personally, I've heard so many times... Almost exclusively, every time the fake news line comes up, it's in the context of a criticism of him. And so when he he attaches, when he attaches enemy of the people to fake news, to me what it equals is, if you criticize me, you are fraudulent and an enemy of the people. And to me, that's scary because of how highly I value freedom of speech, which is one of the reasons that, you know, I got acquainted with Jordan Peterson, right? Is is that free speech is important. Do you see any validity to my concern? I, um, I, no, I, I'm, to, eh, I mean, you're entitled to your opinion. I don't necessarily agree with it, but you're entitled to it. So you, so you think that, that you, think you just think that that's a saying. silly concern? Like there's no free speech concern with Trump at all. I, I, th I think out of anyone, he, he is <laughs> a, a big supporter of free speech because he probably wouldn't get to say half the stuff that he does without it. I don't think he's trying to suppress anyone's free speech. Yeah, I don't think Trump is trying to actively suppress the common man's free speech, but I do think that he views leftist media as unnecessary, and I do think that he's surprised that he is constantly challenged, because I don't think, I think for the majority of his life, well, anybody a, who challenged him, he could just fire. There's a difference between being challenged, though, and being attacked on a daily basis, so... Well, I mean, it, doesn't that come with the job description of being the president? In a free, in a free, uh, with a free press. 
Has there ever been a president that's never been constantly attacked? Oh, God. I don't know. I've never watched all the press conferences for all of them, but I mean, <clears throat> of course people have their critiques of the president. That's not a problem. But when you have, you know, certain networks or certain anchors or whatever that nonstop, no matter what he does, attack him, whether it's good or bad, you know, if he does something they view as bad, they go after him for it. And if he does something he, he you know, they, most people view as something good, they don't want to give him any credit for it. And they try and find a way to twist it. Well, yeah. I mean, I saw that in the comments section um, when I talked about his prison reform action. Um, where right. it doesn't, I mean, a guy could rescue 15 L's on Christmas Eve. It wouldn't matter. They'd find some evil twisted reason for why he did it. Mm -hmm. Right, I, exactly. I, so I think that's <laughs> where a lot of, I think that's where his frustration comes from. And I, he's said that multiple times that it doesn't matter what I do, they're going to, yeah, they're but, not going to give me for it, credit for it anyway. Well, well so, what was Fox News doing with, with Obama for eight years? I don't know. They, you know, what's funny is up until Trump got involved in politics, I wasn't interested in it. I absolutely hated politics. Huh. That's interesting. Huh. Before Trump, I did not watch anything remotely political related. I hated I stayed out of it because to me it was all the same. All these people that keep promising the same shit and they don't ever fulfill any of it. So what's the point? Well, I mean, he, he's he's definitely he, he's definitely doing his thing. That's for sure. I mean, he, he's he's following through on his stuff. You can't deny him that. Right, exactly. He told you he's one of the few politicians in air quotes that's actually trying to do you know what he told people he was going to do, and I think a lot of people give him credit for it. And unfortunately, I think some people don't like that about him. Yeah, but the thing that, that gets me about Trump is that I don't think that he can get out of the mentality that everybody reports to him. I don't think he understands that as a president, you know, like over there <laughs> yeah, in Europe. Does that happen often where a president gets sued? Well, uh, I mean, over there in Europe, they have a term called prime minister. And minister actually means servant. Like you're the primary servant of the people. Mm -hmm. And I don't think, I don't see that type of mentality with Trump where he, like, it just seems to me that he thinks that everybody reports to him. The media is a completely separate body that doesn't report to the president at all. Mm -hmm. um, and that's how the but democracy he, is supposed to work. At his rallies that this is one of the, you know, the most awesome political movements that this country has seen in a long time and it's a movement and it's not about me it's about all of us and trying to make the country better yes that supports that kind of mentality no but th that's something that any wise political uh, uh candidate is gonna say but what i'm saying is like, when he gets yes. because because you got to agree with me leah and those people at that at that rally with the maga hats aren't going to challenge him either they're not no. going to challenge him and say, hey, the using the term invasion is an eminently dangerous term to use in our current co political climate. They're not going to say that to him. So, of course, he's fine with them. What I'm talking about is when he gets directly challenged, it seems to me that he just wants to fire people because he's he's ra he's been raised that way his entire life. His dad was a rich, powerful person. I don't resent them for it. He was a rich, powerful person. I mean, his his famous quote before he got elected was, you're fired. And so it just seems to me that <laughs> right. he can't, and, and I, I'm not even mad, uh, and I'm saying, I'm saying this to everybody, all of us would have a difficult time if you were raised that way, um, if I take epigenetics into consideration, it would almost be impossible not to think that everybody reports to you. Because now, the dichotomy of being the president is that you are the most powerful person on the planet Earth, while at the same time, you're supposed to be a servant of the people. And I think... Managing that dichotomy is extremely difficult, and I don't think that he's doing a very good job with it. Well, I I do think he is, you know, I, I, I think actually I kind of agree with you that he's probably not used to um, that mindset of being the servant. But I do think 
you know, considering he's only almost two years into it, I do think he's doing a decent job as such. I think he's doing what's what he views as best for the people of the country and his policies, you know, and he's not taking his presidential salary. He's donating all of his presidential salary to various. Well, um, he's, he's definitely not in it for the money. That's obvious. Right. Because right. he so obviously I mean, took a pay cut doing this stuff. Right. So, you know, I, I agree with you that his mentality is probably not the most submissive servant like attitude. I think when he gets challenged, his initial reaction is to want to fight back. Yeah. Um, sometimes he, I, I think every now and then, yeah, I think he takes it too far sometimes in the stuff that he says. You know, I am a Trump supporter, but I'm not a blind follower. You know, I, I do uh, I do think he takes things a little too far sometimes. But overall, I think that that kind of fight back instinct um, has served him well in uh, certain instances um, in his presidency so far. Okay, I could agree with that. Leah of the Village, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. I, I wish we had a little, a little clap thing. <laughs> Much love, Hi. sis. A little applause machine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Wait no, for the next you. next caller. Bye. Love you. Bye. Love you. Good luck, honey. Thank you. Dan. What's cracking, army? What's cracking, big homie? <laughs> hey, Dan. Hey, sorry. Hey, John. Good. Okay, so Trump, um, I, I want to play devil's advocate here a little bit. So my thing is, how much, how seriously are you when you say that the president of the of the United States is the most powerful man on the planet? I'm dead serious. You're dead serious. Okay, so what if I was to tell you that every president, every prime minister in every country on the planet is just a puppet? Uh, I mean, <laughs> well, I, I, I would respond by saying he's the most powerful puppet. Let me say it that way. I would agree. Um, but how much power do you think the guy has when it comes to um, policy reform and things like that? Well, no, I mean, in America, we have checks and balances because our founding fathers understood the sinful nature of human beings. But, for example, for example, when George Bush wanted to invade Iraq, we invaded Iraq. We made that happen. Yeah, yeah, do you know why he made that happen? Because two planes just blew up the fucking Twin Towers, man. And yeah. the Americans were like, let's go and blow up all the fucking Muslims. Yeah, he used he used the national tragedy to, um, to to further his foreign policy agenda. So, what's your point about Trump? So, I don't think... Um, I mean, the guy, obviously, is a complete wanker. What's I mean, that mean? He's not a... You know, obviously, the, the, the guy's not a nice person. Um, it, I mean... He shouldn't have become president. People were pissed off with the last president, and that's how he ended up in office. Am I right? Well, I mean, I don't know that it's that simple that he's not a nice person. I mean, I've 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 heard Trump do some pretty out. You know, he got he broke down on the side of a road. Somebody changed his tire, and then Trump goes and pays off the rest of the guy's mortgage. Mm -hmm. um, but that's chump change to him, man. That's that's a fucking uh, yeah, that, What do you call it? That that's a publicity stunt. It's not a publicity. You know, like, <laughs> No, but see, here's the thing with me. I, I'm trying to be as objective as I possibly can. He was under no obligation to pay off that guy's mortgage. He did it. Of course that's, not. That's a good thing. I'm not going to say, oh, that's Trump change. But, it's a fa Hold on. The fact of the matter is none of us are randomly going out doing, uh, giving out Trump change to people randomly on the street. Right. Many of us are complete petty pinching, you know, stingy, yeah. stingy bastards who won't lift a finger to anybody. Mm -hmm. So I don't care 100%. if it's Trump change. He just changed those people's lives, and that's good. We got to give him that. Yeah, that's that's good. But I mean, what were the guy's motives behind it? 
How can, our, how you know can anybody I mean? know like, that? How can you know? Well, I mean, it, just from his history, like if you go back and look at the shit that he says and the things that he's done, and I mean, the guy clearly, you can't tell me the guy's like he's a he's not a good dude, man. He's not a good dude. Well, like, I, I don't know. I mean, maybe you know Ben, Ben Webb. Stop it. Um, I don't know Dan. Maybe you know Mr. Trump. I don't know him. I don't know him personally. Okay, so I, I, mean, I don't know how you could make these. Himself, how, I don't know, you know how you could like, make these absolutist statements about the man's uh, moral character. Well, it's not. It's not absolute, but I mean, it's what he projects. Well, I don't think that he only projects badness. I think. Look, if you've had, well, if you clearly, had a camera, the last two days the guy's done something really good. You know, you, like obviously the prison reform thing's fantastic. Mm-hmm. Right. You can't take that away from him. But what are the motives behind it? And that goes back to my thing, you know, but um, that the guy's not really in control of of what he's doing. You know what I mean? Like when it comes down to it, man, they're all slaves to the powers that be. Okay, who are the powers? Who are who are these powers, Dan? That you're talking about? So the one percent of the one percent that control most of the money on the planet, dude. Who are they? Name them. Well, it's it's not really a them. I suppose it is a them. I mean, the Rothschilds are a part of it. There's a whole bunch of these Jewish bankers. Part of it. It's those Jewish bankers, huh? How old on you breaking up, man? It's is it? It's those Jewish bankers. It's the Rothschilds and Soros. Not just not just the Jewish ones, man. There's plenty of um, European, white, very very rich people. Okay, so they're the ones that are in control. A hundred percent. Who whoever has the money has the control, bro. Okay. All right. So what's your point? So I don't think you can blame. Um, just like the president himself for what he can and can't do. If you know what I mean? Like, I don't think it's all on them, you know, whether it be Obama, whether it be Bush, whether it be Trump. Well, no, I can, um, blame, I can blame Obama for not using his executive powers to the degree that uh, he should have in order to do something for black people in America. Right. Well, in saying that he was a puppet man, he was one black man in a very, very white sea, bro. So? So, uh, how much pushback do you think he was going to get if he was reforming particular things for the African-American race? The facts are, Trump was able to get the Koch brothers and the ACLU to agree on something. That's Very that's true. That's part well, of the I'm leadership, is, that's well, part of the leadership the package. What I'm talking about on this channel a lot is institutionalized racism, right? Yeah, and you had a black president so, with the middle name Hussein who got elected by the majority of the country. So he can't use that as an excuse. Well, I don't think he ever did use that as an excuse. But I honestly think that if he was going to reform anything big that was going to be good for the African-American people, there would have been some serious, serious pushback. Well, yeah, but who cares? Like, he didn't even try. We didn't even see him get I know much power I he had in his well, first term. I'm, I'm just playing devil's advocate here. Don't don't shoot the messenger, right? <laughs> Trump could cure cancer and people would find an issue with it. I agree. The lack you know, of ability exactly. to be objective about Trump is amazing to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I totally agree. So what I'm saying is it doesn't matter which president, who it is, whether it's the prime minister here. Dude, we've had three prime ministers this year here. Like, the, the party keeps fucking booting them out. It's bullshit. The guy that's our prime minister now isn't even an elected official. So, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's, you can't, I don't think you can trust or put your faith in any of them. Well, I, 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 re- I really don't. I, I agree. I, I think for me, what I want to do is accomplish a semi objective view on what is happening with this person, Donald Trump, in our country. Mm-hmm. And the idea that he everything he does is terrible, I think, is unhelpful. And I think the idea that he's a champion for free speech for all Americans and that he is uh, a, a great is also unhelpful. And so my goal is to just look at him exactly for who he is so that we can understand where we are, so that we can read the room, right? That, that's kind of where I'm at. 
<clears throat> okay, so question. Do, do you believe, honestly, like looking, a bit, trying to be objective and looking at Donald Trump, do you believe he's a racist? I think that I had somebody in our in our chat. I don't know if you remember this two months ago. He said, you know, I, I am a racist still, but I'm working on it after watching your guys's channel. Yeah. Yep. Anybody that was born before 1960 gets a free pass from me. Yeah, you are like that. I'm like, I mean, look, you won't be able to survive where I live. You won't be able to survive if you're if you're if you're completely oversensitive to racism. I think that it's almost impossible for a person in Trump's position and his geographical location not to be raised with racist tendencies. But I also believe that people can change. And I also believe that he takes his role seriously and wants to leave a legacy behind where he was the best president. And so I think there's a lot of ego behind some of the moves that he makes. But don't think for a second that I don't think that he's able to say, hey, I sat down with all these black folks. They're all pissed off at Obama. I can make it so that I actually do something for these people. Mm -hmm. The fact of the matter is black people are working more now under Trump than they were under Obama. And now we've got a situation where we can actually do something about prison reform to reverse William Jefferson Clinton and his wife, black children or super predators, Clinton. Right. Um, horrible, horrific family destroying community annihilating concept of uh, three strikes and you're out so i don't know if that answers your question no it didn't i don't I, I, look <laughs> i don't, I don't know what to say. dan i don't believe that you're completely guilt-free as far as racism goes as far as how I, you... i'm not i have said that before right but but so that doesn't make you an immediately horrible person it just no, means it, doesn't. it like, just like means I you're growing. Here, like I've told you before, there is there is lots of racism here, and I grew up in a place where the the natives here were looked upon as pieces of shit. So I grew up with that, and that became a part of my thought process. And eventually, when I got older, I realised that it, that's not right. So as you say, people can change. Yeah, you're in, pro um, you're in process. I'm sure if I sat you down with a native and you guys had a conversation or an aboriginal person, I'm sure there are some things where the aboriginal person would say, you're still racist as hell, right? Possibly, yeah. Okay, so that, that means that you're in process. So when you ask me if Trump is a racist, I'm like, well, he's in process. Everybody's in process. I agree. Okay, but, so why, yeah. is that, why is that question even relevant? Okay, why is it why is it relevant? Okay, so my thought process in him going and doing the things that he's doing, using Obama's 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 failures <laughs> for for his own wins, um, isn't like it's it's not a um, not coming from a, a moral perspective. I think he's trying to do exactly what you said. He's trying to make it, make a legacy for himself where he's looked upon as the best president there's ever been. Yes, now, I think I think that is a part of it, but I don't think that that's a sum total part of it. The lack of being able to see anything good in President Trump is what I'm saying is unhelpful. And the lack of being able to see the really dangerous elements of who Trump is, I think is also unhelpful. I think he's an extremely dangerous actor on the world stage right now. And I think if you if you don't see that, then there's danger. But I also think if you completely try to demonize him and say he's literally Hitler and take every good thing that he does and demonize it, I also think that that's unhelpful. That's my point. Yeah, very true. Um, but I don't think someone that has, like as, as you put it, that where he's come up from, where he's... Um, where he's lived his life and where he's come from is going to make a good president because he's got underlying, you know, things that aren't good. I mean, the guy saying, look, look, I understand the concept of build the wall, right? I understand the concept, but I don't know, like... It's very, very hard to patrol a border that big. Um, so, <laughs> you know, 
um, and people just jumping ship, trying to trying to make a better life for themselves. I understand that, but I think people need to immigrate pro- properly. Like I agree with that. People need to immigrate pro- properly, um, and I mean even with, with the like the Islamic thing, man, extremist Islam. The the people that are coming in into Australia, the people that are coming into Europe, um, that aren't being screened properly is insane and there's so much bad shit happening um it's not good so i i I understand the concept of it but i don't think you can you can point at an entire race and go this is the main reason we're having so much issue um you know it's it's, it's the same with the guns man if you were to if you were to try and and take the guns off everyone there's too many illegal guns coming in anyway it's not going to make a fucking difference i agree with that you know yeah. Um, so, so <laughs> you know, it's it's a, it's a hard thing, man. Like, oh, I don't have the answers. I don't know. I mean, there's a bunch of people that are, you know, ten times smarter than me that don't don't have the answers for this stuff. Um, so I don't know where we go with it. Um, yeah, the, I, I think conversations like this conversations need to be more conversations need to be had to. I think there needs to be some sort of, you know, world governing body, you know, um, if there's going to be any real change for the better. To well, be honest, that's I'm, my honest opinion. I'm fine with that as long as it's headed up by an American. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, yes, <laughs> yes. And there, and there, there inherent is why most of the planet hates America. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, yeah. look, we've like, got all the resources that we're 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 uh, s- s- burning all this cash supporting you Europeans. So yeah, it's time to uh, ante- it's, you got to ante up. This is the thing you, you hate America, but then but then America's well, financing your economy all when over the place. When you when you motherfuckers go and blow shit up, who's right next to you? That's true. I'm not mad at you for that, but I don't hate so, you. Yeah. No, no, no. But what I'm saying is, America, Americans can decide. Okay, we're go, we're going to invade, um, and now just because of you know being a small country and not having a massive military, not being a superpower, we go. Okay, we got to follow them because if we don't, <laughs> and we get attacked around deep shit. Right. It's true. You know. And that's, so it, that's and I mean I've met um, I've met a, a few quite a few Marines. Um, there was a big ship that came in and docked in Sydney. Um, a big aircraft carrier a few years back and man the marines I met arrogant and like just real wankers man like <laughs> the, the, like your typical well how can I say typical but just like real arrogant fucking didn't give a shit about anyone that wasn't with them um, and that was kind of a turn off for me but I know I know everyone's not like that but yeah, well, there's, I mean, there's a big. They're they're in, they're indoctrinated to think that way. Oh yeah, they're going for off sure. to war. They're going after war, man. What do you want them to be? All congenial and nice? <laughs> no, I don't expect them to be nice. I, I think you have a, have to have a um, particular state of mind to be able to kill people, dude. Like to kill people. It's true. Without yeah, you you need to be a certain kind of dude to be able to do that. Jay is um, at four. Hold on. Jay's at four, ladies and gentlemen. Jay is at four. He's doing a countdown, and when he hits one, he's going to all of a sudden put an arrow, and whoever the next person is to comment is getting a free shirt. He's going to purchase. All right. all right, Dan, I appreciate you, my buddy. Yeah, too easy, mate. Have a good one. Have a good one. Who's this? This is James. James, talk Hi. to me, my brother. Yeah, listen, uh... Regarding the prison reform, I think you're a little too harsh on your brother, Barack. B- my brother Barack Hussein Obama, my beautiful brother. Okay, go ahead. It's very possible. I'm still, I am still extremely salty at him, James. To be honest with you. Well, I understand that, but uh, what I'm, what I'm lacking in uh, your points is certain perspective. Very possible. I will readily admit to that. Most black people uh, are not very objective when it comes to Mr. Obama. We weren't objective when he was first running because it was like, oh, my God, we got a black guy. And then after he left, everybody was like, screw that guy. 
So I agree. I'm probably being very emotional, but go ahead. Well, I mean, you mentioned that I didn't do much, uh, particularly on this object. Sis uh, for, which, hold on, which, hold on. Just give me a second. About sure. systemic incarceration. That's That was what I said. So, well, uh, I was going to address it. I hope it's it's systemic uh, changes that he brought up, brought about. But also, I'd like to put it in a pers in a historical perspective, for that matter. Go for uh, it. If you if you remember, uh, he had a supermajority in the Senate and the Congress for for the first two years of his presidency. Yep. Uh, well, unfortunately, the country was in a pretty fucked up condition for those first two years that the prison reform was in the primary target. And, yeah, uh, it just wasn't a priority. Took, well, it wasn't. And it wouldn't have been for any president who would be in the office at that time. Would have been for me. Well, it would have been for you. Well, that's so nice and dandy to say, but you're not a politician. No, I'm not. Go ahead. So my point being is, uh, if there is, if there is no way to push for that reform and get the get the uh, uh, necessary votes to change something, he pretty much started doing something about uh, amending certain sentences, particularly for nonviolent crimes, particularly drug possession and drug distribution right after the midterms or actually before the midterms in 2010 which is the second year into his presidency and if you look up his his record he did quite a bit a matter of factly i mean he loosened he and he and the holder they loosened sentencing uh across the board for nonviolent crimes which in my opinion, should have had pretty pretty significant impact on on your community or or on uh, or on mon minorities. If you if you recall, he pretty much stopped uh, criminalizing possession of marijuana. I mean, how many states during his presidency legalized marijuana, and he never decided to go after any of those dispensaries. He never decided to disrupt that business whatsoever. Who who? who? Who owns the majority of dispensaries? And I hear this a lot. There's like five dispensaries in my in my little in a twenty mile radius of where I live. Do you know who owns those? It's not black people. And your point being, <laughs> him doing him doing stuff about uh, mm -hmm. uh, about easing up on the dispensaries doesn't doesn't uh, doesn't do much for my community, sir. Yeah, but so. But at the same time, it's, it also says that your committee cannot raise enough money to be able to open up those dispensaries. That's true. And there are systemic reasons for that, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I mean, you can't blame everything on the system. Well, hold, hold on, my brother. Hold on. You're saying that Obama easing up on the dispensaries was some sort of win for the black community. I'm explaining to you that that's not the case. No, no, no. I'm not saying... I'm not saying uh, that is a primary, secondary, even tertiary reason. But what I'm saying is that he loosened a lot of the sentencing and prosecution of these type of crimes, which those crimes were the ones filling up the jails, not the not the violent offenses. I mean, if you look up the the population of U.S. prisons, most of them, most people are in it for nonviolent crimes, not not the violent ones. Oh, I agree with you. I, I agree with you completely. I'm still waiting, though. I'm still waiting, though, for uh, legislation that at attacked the systemic targeting of black people in the 80s and 90s. Because that was the specific context of my video. Mm -hmm. Well, you go after the three strikes law, right? Do you understand? Uh, the his Hold on, James. Do you understand the historical context of the three strikes law? Well, why don't you enlighten me? Okay, so one of um, uh, Richard Nixon's top aides on his deathbed confessed that the war on drugs was designed to go after hippies, or what he called hippies, which is basically left-leaning white people, and black people, the black community. 
So the war on drugs completely decimated the black community in the 80s, and it was specifically went to target us. And then in the 90s, you had the three strikes rule for the people that had been assaulted by the war on drugs, which then completely solidified the decimation of the black community. So now you have a generation and a half of people who are without fathers, without uh, without male role models, and what filled the gap was violence and criminology, which anybody will tell you will happen when you do that to a group of people. So, so if you want to say, well, hey, you know, it's 2000, it's, yeah, we did that for about 20 years. Now it's 2018. What's wrong with y'all? Why don't you have enough capital to, uh, to create a dispensary yourself? I don't know. Maybe it's because wealth generally is accumulated generationally. And when you when you go after a specific group of people to incarcerate them so that they cannot generate wealth, so that they cannot pass it down to their progeny, then you're going to create situations like that cyclically. So in order to undo that, I don't need anybody to help me. I just need people to stop putting barricades in my way of progress. So this, this is these are regular basic talking points. Anybody in the black community that, that's known anything about the last 30, 40 years in America will tell you. Barack Hussein Obama knew all of this and did nothing to deal with the systemic issues that have been happening to us over the last 30 to 40 years. He was too busy sending people into uh, re-education camps for not selling birthday cakes to people. I mean, those are the facts. So I get it. Obama did not have enough votes in Congress to bring about that executive change or change in that law that's a simple fact my brother who had more power in his first two years trump or obama where was the country in the first two years of obama's uh, uh, presidency compared to the first trump first trump's two years economically can you answer my question no you can you answer my question i'll answer your question after you answer mine because i asked mine first Okay, so repeat your question. Who had more power in their first two years, Trump or Obama? They had the same amount of power. Oh, Trump had a supermajority? Trump has enough to push through, uh, through to push through legislation. My brother, that wasn't my question. My question was, who had more power in their first two years, well, Trump okay. or Obama? Okay, if you want to go to that detail, then Obama did, yeah. Okay, so now I'm going to answer your question. What The economy was in much worse situation when Obama took office than with Trump. Obama also had to deal with what he was going to do with Iraq because we were still in Iraq, right? Yeah. <clears throat> and there was also the discussion about how we're going to handle the troop surge or we're going to do another troop surge. I mean, I remember all of this. I'm very aware. Here's the thing. If you're the president of the United States... I expect you to have a foreign policy and a domestic policy. I expect you to be able to walk and chew gum at the same time. So I understand that there were challenges. There were challenges. But the problem is when he had a supermajority, he didn't even present anything that could have reversed these policies, brother. Mm -hmm. Present it. If you present it and the nasty white Republicans shoot it down because they all hate black people, I'm speaking tongue in cheek here, then fine. But that's not what happened. You had a supermajority and you didn't do what you could have done to do something for our people. That's a problem. And uh, this is not just Vin talking here. You you got a lot of folks in the black community that feel this way, my guy. And I don't speak for all the black community, but I'm telling you, I speak for a lot of them. Well, I'm not... um... I don't really care if you speak for yourself or for for you know bigger group of people, but again, what I said is you guys are lacking com- uh, completely the perspective. I mean, if if a ten percent unemployment, if five hundred thousand jobs being lost every month, if uh, Dow Jones at seventy five hundred or sixty eight hundred, whatever it dropped down to, if uh, uh, auto industry being pretty much on its knees, if the banking industry, which is pretty much a foundation of every economy, being on its knees is not enough for you or to convince you that he was in shithole of trouble to focus on, 
and put the prison reform on a back burner, then nothing will. My brother, Donald Trump is not walking, is, is not having a walk in the park. He's, he's got challenges of his own. Now, keep he's in not, mind, say again. His challenges, his challenges are laughable. No, they're not laughable. <laughs> There are ridiculous and they're rappable. Donald, <laughs> all right, all right. Well, I, 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 well, shit. Donald Trump has no problems. I didn't. America has no problems. I didn't know that, Jane. No, are you no, serious? It's not about America. It, it's not about America. It has no problems. But you're comparing apples and oranges. No, That's I'm not comparing. I, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure I articulated pretty well the, the challenges that Barack Obama was facing when he got into office. Is that fair? articulated it pretty well true okay. but you don't understand the depth of, of no what you're i, I do understand what you're ignoring though my brother is that he didn't even attempt his first two years when he had a supermajority, did not even attempt it's not to true i just told you in, in 2010 and i'm not sitting enough my computer right now but <coughs> if you are you gotta let you me finish tell, you gotta let you me can, finish you, the can, sentence. You, you can type in uh, Obama legislation, uh, whatever achievements or whatever you want to call it, uh, in in the legal system, and you will see for yourself that he or, he started in two thousand and ten to you, try to do something. You gotta let me finish, particularly you, on a non-violent crime. You have to let me finish my sentence. Okay, go ahead. He did not attempt to reverse the systemic targeting of our people. Started in the war on drugs and three and three strikes. Right. That's what I said. <clears throat> well, he actually, if if he allowed states to legalize marijuana, then he de facto stopped the war on drugs. Nope. <laughs> let, let me. I'm going to say something to you, James, and then you say back to me what I said. Okay. Okay. Obama did not attempt to reverse the effects of the war on drugs and the three strikes initiation in the 80s and 90s against our community specifically. He didn't do that well, when he, he, he didn't do that when he had a supermajority. He didn't do it legislatively, yeah, you're right. Okay, and that's why we're mad at him. I understand that, but again, uh, in my opinion, that opinion lacks perspective. I know, That's all and it's it's easy for you to say because you're not in that situation. And you know what? If I was you, I'd probably say the same thing. You got bigger fish to fry. Those are, those are not your interests. I understand that. I'm not mad at you for that. I'm saying those it's are not, my interests, though. It's not true that it's it's not true that it's not in my interest because I don't know how my how my love how my life evolves, and I might be potentially in that situation whether I want it or not myself. It's right? impossible for you to be in this situation. Well, how do you know that? I mean, because yeah. you don't have you don't <laughs> you don't have government initiations to destroy your community, and you never will. Such as, I just explained it to you, my brother. The war on drugs is admittedly was admittedly admittedly designed to attack our people. So, well, so, okay, go ahead. so, so, so there's no way, all I'm, when I say it's not your interest, what I'm saying is it doesn't affect you directly. So of course you're going to say that there are other priorities, just like gay marriage doesn't affect me directly. So of course I have different priorities. I don't know what it's like to be an LGBT person. So uh, that's all I'm saying is like, I'm not mad at you for that. I get it. What I'm saying is us, it was a priority for us. And it wasn't a priority for him. That's all. So you and I are saying the exact same thing. You're just saying I'm being too hard on him. And what I'm saying is, well, maybe if you were in our position, you might feel a little bit differently about it. Well, I'm not necessarily saying too hard. Like I said, all I'm saying is that, in my opinion, your opinion lack perspective, that's all. Whether you're being too hard or not, that's up to you to, to decide or, def or def decide what you want. But, yeah. I mean, you know. Yeah. I hear you. Alrighty, man. Let me let me uh let me read let me read um one one thing for you, because I made a okay. statement and I always like to quote my um quote my stuff. This was from 2016 CNN.com. <clears throat> um, 
One of Richard Nixon's top advisors and a key figure in the Watergate scandal said the war on drugs was created as a political tool to fight blacks and hippies. And you know what the hippies did in the 60s. They were supporting us, according to a 22-year-old interview recently published in Harper's Magazine. Uh, the Nixon campaign in 1968 and the Nixon White House after that had two enemies, the anti-war left and black people. Okay, you understand? And this is this is this is uh, former Nixon domestic policy chief John Ehrlichman told Harper's writer Dan Baum. You understand what I'm saying? We knew we couldn't make it illegal to be either against the war or be black, but by getting the public to associate the hippie, hippies with marijuana and blacks with heroin, and then criminal, criminalizing both heavily, we could disrupt those communities. We could arrest those leaders, raid their homes, break up their meetings, and vilify them night after night on the evening news. Did we know we were lying about drugs? Of course we did. So that was the 80s. That, that, yeah. th so from 1968 all the way up into the end of the 80s and then in the 90s we had, we had, uh, we had the, the three strikes rule. So uh, say what you want about how come you guys don't have enough capital? Create your own dispens dispensaries. Say, say anything you'd like. But the folks in power specifically targeted us. Those are the facts. So, and, and I'm not, I'm not, you know, it, it is what it is. I'm doing okay for myself. I'm doing fine for myself because, you know, I was raised a certain way and given a certain mindset and given certain gifts by God. And so I've been, I've been fine my whole life. But I also know that not everybody is like me. And I also know that I'm the exception to the rule. I know that. And Mr. Obama seems to have forgotten that. That's why that's that's where the criticism comes from. Well, well again, I mean, I don't want to go uh, to another topic, but I mean, there is quite a few millionaires or even billionaires among the blacks. So it's not like it's not like uh, the entire community was, wouldn't be uh, on their knees. <clears throat> you know, as I said. Um, I understand that there are people that are in any community, they're going to be people that rise to the top for various amount of reasons. What cannot be denied is that there's been a systemic attack on a specific group of people. That's what I'm saying. No, I mean, I, I agree with your point that initially back in the whatever 60s or 70s, the U.S. government came up with a system that was discriminated discriminating towards you guys absolutely but like i mentioned all i'm saying here is that in my opinion he just did not have enough time and once the time ran out or once he lost the votes he just didn't have the legislative power that's all or executive power well of course he ran well well i mean i agree with you but we have term limits in america right so he, right. he right. was always going to run out of time that's my point. It's not like the time caught up on him and he said, oh, shit, what can I do? <laughs> like, he knew that he was going to run out of time. Nobody gave him an infinite amount of time to, to pass this legislation. But I think your point is, look, it wasn't a priority for him. And my point is, I agree. I'm agreeing with you. It wasn't a priority. Where we disagree is you're saying it was right for it not to be a priority for him. And where I'm, I'm saying is it was wrong for it not to have been a priority for him. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Well, I, I don't know if you've looked to, or how closely you looked into that prison reform is currently on the table. But part of it is actually uh, extension of his own law that changed the mandatory sentencing for crack cocaine possession and, and distribution. So, matter of factly, uh, his own law is part of that reform. And on top of it, it's kind of interesting that Trump brought it up after Session uh, was ousted. And I don't know if you looked up or if you looked closely into Trump's uh, presidential campaign, he was fiercely opposing any kind of a prison reform at the time. Oh yeah, I know that. It wasn't until Kushner showed up, because Kushner has exactly. Kushner had family that was in the penal system. I know right, that. Exactly. I know yeah. that. And, and and this this particular law, if I'm not mistaken, was already or has already passed uh, the the house in May, so it must be it must have been out there for quite some time. 
And it's interesting that it's only making its way to Senate only after the, the latest AG was ousted. So there probably wasn't that much will among the top uh, top dogs to push for it. Look, I, 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 I don't I don't think that, that Trump goes to sleep in, in African pajamas. I don't think that Trump is is a champion of black people. All I'm saying is he got it done. Well, wait, 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 wait. He hasn't gotten it done yet. It hasn't passed. It's gonna. You and I both know it's gonna pass. It'd be it'd be it'd be political and career suicide for Trump to bring something like this into Congress and it not pass. No, I agree with you. I mean, it would be a uh, abysmal failure. For sure. <laughs> it's gonna pass. There's no doubt. I put my firstborn on it. Yeah, but we'll see what kind of a uh, changes or modifications they will make to that to that law. Well, I mean. It's better than it's better than the changes and modifications to, to Obama's non-existent law. <clears throat> Alrighty, man. All right, brother. I appreciate you. Take care. Good conversation. Very, very good conversation. Fiery, fiery. Who am I talking to? Hey. Who's this? This is a metal guitarist, but I'm I'm having a hard time hearing you. Can you hear me now? Uh, I'm I'm gonna do my best. Oh. I I uh I work as an audio engineer, so I'm gonna listen real hard. Okay. <laughs> so um, this is off topic. Uh, and I hope that's okay. Yep. Kind of has to do with the the community you guys are building and stuff. Yep. Um. So I saw the stuff that you guys did with um, the elite or the underground metal elitist. Yep. And so I I was like, okay, I can get into that because I don't really pay attention to genres and stuff. I never really like that whole division stuff. Um, so I went on this thing just to kind of see what, you know, like different genres was and stuff like that. And I, he had a live chat and I, I got on his live chat and I was like, Hey, I, uh, saw you on Ben and sorry. I subbed to your channel. I, I'd, I'd like to learn a little more about this cause I never really paid attention to genres and stuff. And he, he was saying like, your fans were like talking shit about him and stuff. And sorry for cussing. I'm, I shouldn't have done that. Um, and I just, I'm really kind of confused about that whole thing. I kind of, I mean, my heart kind of breaks for the guy. Cause he's like, you know, he's a little bit self-absorbed. Um, but I just don't know what to make of all that. So I was hoping maybe you can kind of, Shed some light on that whole situation. Yeah, so that that's Chris, and I could tell you, um, as a, you know, in truth, I, I love that guy. I love that dude. Um, I, I think, do too. I actually I saw that stream yesterday. It was last night, and we came up and and he said, you know, I'm not friends with Vin and Sorry anymore, and and that made Sorry. Yeah, that's you. He, he was answering my question. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that that made Sorry pretty sad. Um, I, 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 so here, here's the thing: is that we've got 14 million people who've seen our stuff, or 14 million views, whatever you want to call it. And so I don't think that we're celebrities at all, but I do think that I do take it very, very seriously that so many people are looking at our stuff. And so there have been certain things, um, uh homophobic slurs, um, misogynistic statements against women. Our, our women, when I say our women, I'm talking about village women. Um, not to say that I'm okay, oh, sure. not to say that I'm okay with him doing that to any women, but I feel a sense of responsibility for our community. Uh, there is a person that had recently that had, had died and it was basically like, Hey, good riddance. So there are, there are a couple really seriously egregious issues to where, you know, the Bible says if you have an issue with your brother, talk to him to the side. Um, don't don't make it public. So I was people were coming to me saying things 
but I wasn't going to go back and tell people, you know, I, you know, I, that, that's not how it's supposed to go. So I, I would have these conversations one on one with Chris uh, many times and it just wasn't going anywhere. And so it got to the point where I said, OK, look, um, I cannot in good conscience continue to promote um, your channel. Look, I people don't need to agree with me. They don't need to believe in God. They can be Satanists for all. I, I mean, it's not that. It's just when you go out and attack, yeah. attack vulnerable groups of people, use homophobic slurs, use, I mean, people know how I feel about, you know, feminism, things like that. So if, if you watch this stream, he, he said that he never said the, the F a G word. That's, 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 Pat, that's, 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 that's completely untrue. That okay. is that All I, right. I listen, I, I've had, so, so I've got some about, I mean, I love everybody, but I've got a couple really, really good friends in this chat that had have personally witnessed this stuff and, and texted me on my phone and said, yo. Um, and even before I finally made my final decision, I bounced it off of uh, one of them. I said, yo, man, am I, am I losing my mind here or what? And then he began to list off all these things. So, no, that's, that's completely untrue. And that's part of the problem, right? Like, you said this stuff on video. <laughs> like, you know, you, 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 you can't. You can't post stuff on video, have it up there, get confronted, pull the video, and then deny that you said it. You know. Uh, uh, okay, I I didn't see that video. Um, yeah, I just was going by what he responded to me uh, in the in his live stream. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, yeah. So, I, so I don't have all the facts. I was just, and he was saying that. You guys were saying stuff about him. I said I I can't really believe that Vin would say stuff like that. I mean, what's no? I I, I kept all of that. You know, like I said, I, I reached out to a couple people for advice, <clears throat> um, but I kept all of that pretty close to the chest because um, it wasn't. Even though I don't want to promote his channel, I'm not going to do anything to destroy his channel either. He did talk <laughs> about us publicly yesterday, and so. I felt at some point I was going to have to address it, but th that's what happened. But I will say that I love his show. I still watch it. I love him as a person. Um, and I just hope that, you know, all of us have areas where we can, where we need to grow. And, you know, I'm never going to say he's horrible or anything like that. I love that guy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And and I, I, I sure. hope the best for him. And, you know, and eventually my hope and prayer really is that we'll be able to reconnect again at some point and, um, when we're we're both more mature let me say it that way so if you're if you see this chris i love you man i love you to death bro um but yeah that's kind of where I, we're at even just watching your videos i learned a lot from like the different genres and metal and stuff i'm talking to chris right now <laughs> um because i never really paid attention to the genres i i more listen to the music because I'm a musician rather than a lyricist so I just like the music part of it um, more I yeah. mean the lyrics are interesting and stuff but if it I mean lyrics don't get me in a mosh pit you know <laughs> right. the music is what gets me in a matter of fact <laughs> uh, ne never mind I won't tell that story but <laughs> I was in a mosh pit I'm 45 and I'm still in a mosh pit so um, there you go. Saturday's an interesting day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, I, I love your guys channel. I love you, Chris. And, um, uh, I learned a lot from all you guys. So thanks for taking the time. Yeah, no doubt. I appreciate it. Good call. All right. Talk to you later. All right, guys, five minutes, five minutes. Who am I talking to? Hey, this is Daniel. Talk to me, Daniel. Hey, so I was the one that posed the question about the uh, victimization thing. It was just basically a question just because, uh, you know, I believe, you know, nothing in life is fair, yada, yada, yada. Um, but don't you also, can't you say that it's also a cycl cyclical argument, uh, like about victimization, like, or well, some something bad happened to me i can't get out of it based upon yada 
yada yada instead of just well give, give me looking a, past the premise give me a real what world had occurred in the past <laughs> give me a real world example what are you talking about so like you guys were talking about uh, I believe it was in regards to capital and dispensaries and this this and that yeah and no I'm, I'm not for or against but I'm just saying that you know the idea or the concept of you know because injustices have happened it is prohibiting me from actually taking the proper steps necessary in my own life to make it better for myself no I, I to do. progress and to achieve and to so on and so forth yeah I think I think that's a good question and I think that the I actually said the opposite. I said me personally, I was able to overcome those things because I had a very strong mother who who gave me a, who who intentionally gave me a certain kind of mindset that was and, and I had certain gifts from God, but I also recognized that not everybody was that way. Uh, do you celebrate the Fourth of July? Do I celebrate the Fourth? I usually have to work the Fourth of July, so I don't get a chance to uh, if you go could out and do all that stuff. But uh, if I did. Sure, I'd probably go out there and light off fireworks and do all, you know, take part in the nation's pride and yada, yada, yada. Isn't, um, it, isn't it true that you're celebrating something that happened hundreds of years ago? No, I understand. What, I understand the point there. What's and, the point? Uh, it, the point is, is like, okay, the very same point of why people celebrate Christmas. No, that's not my point. Here's my point. Your, your forefathers did something hundreds of years ago that you're still benefiting from today, right? Very true, yes. Okay. So it's strange to me when people who would celebrate 4th of July based on the benefits or something that happened in the past somehow don't understand yes. that even though an event happened systemically in the past that it still has ramifications on the present. So, so look, your responsibility as an American is to build on what your father's created. You can't just celebrate. You'll agree with this. You can't just celebrate the 4th of July and sit on your duff and not do anything. Like, you got to go out there and contribute to society, build on this nation, because you inherited something from your fathers, right? Exactly. Right. And so when I say that the black community was targeted, and we, we know this because... This was admitted. I'm looking at. I'm look. Do you know that in the? Do you know that in the? I'm not denying the evidence is there. Hold hold on for a second. I'm absolutely not denying that whatsoever. Let let me let me let me let me let me share something with you. You might not have known this. Do you know that in the 80s, during the whole Iran, during the whole Contra situation over there in in South America, you had CIA um, operators that needed quick cash. So you know what happened? They went and they said, "Now listen to this." It's a situation, and I'll, I'll I'll provide the link in the in the in the in the chat. It's a situation where we need money for a covert operation. The quickest way to raise it is to sell cocaine. You guys go sell it somewhere. We won't, we don't know want it. We don't want to know anything about it. Do you know where they went and sold their crack? Yes, in the inner cities and in the ghettos. Yes. So so you got to this. This is essentially like part of the Iran Contra. Right. This is this is this this testimony. So this is the the late seventies, early eighties, brother. No. Yep. I definitely understand. I was uh, I was born in the early eighties, and so I get I, you know I remember seeing things. Uh, oh, okay. Ab- about all this, and so so here's my whole my my whole point is yes, I know that things have happened, and, and you know any it's not it's not things has, has suffered. Hold on, my brother. It's not things okay. have happened. It's there is a systemic attack on a certain group of people. I had Elio Mike on the call a couple days ago. He goes, well, you guys are doing the most violent crimes. I wonder why that might be. And so there's this disconnection that we're just looking at the fruit of an issue instead of looking at the root of an issue. That's my problem, right? Like, okay. and my problem. So when I talk to black folk, I don't have this conversation with them. Yeah. So I talk to when I talk to black folk, I'm like, look, you need to suck it up. 
You know these people aren't going to help you. You need to go. You need to work harder. You need to work better. You need to be better than everybody because that's what my mom told me. She said, when you get a job, you outwork everybody and you be the absolute best person at that job. That's why I work the hours that I work. My mom gave me a crazy work ethic. So within the black community, uh, and I'm oversimplifying here, but there, there are two very simplistic ways to look at it, which is you are behind the eight ball. You, you you don't have the opportunities other people have. Therefore, you should just quit and feel sorry for yourself and, and, and go down the wrong path. The other way is to look at it and say, look, you've got all these things stacked against you. So the way that you're going to overcome is you're going to be head and shoulders above everybody. You're going to work harder. You're going to work longer hours. Every time there's overtime, you're there, that type of thing. That was the mentality that my mother gave me, right? And that's why... We're doing five, six videos a day over six months and people are war- crying and uh, not crying, very legitimately talking about feeling burnt out. And they do they do 30 percent of what we do. Right. It's because my mom gave yeah. me a certain mentality. So I'm with you about individual responsibility. What I'm saying is okay. what I'm saying is it, as a whole, as a whole, there's yeah. got to be some recognition that we got here by very specific, targeted, intentional actions. And so the context of that whole discussion was Trump, who, you know, Trump's not going out in front of black people and saying, I love you guys, you guys are great, blah. Obama was saying all that BS, right? Here's what Trump, here's what Trump said. I don't know if you remember this during the election. Trump said, look, y'all won't got no jobs. (laughs) <laughs> right he went to the black communities and he was like y'all ain't got no jobs i can get you jobs right like there was no like flowery anything he just told us you guys need to get to work get a job okay yeah. uh and, and i love that and, and and sure enough black people are we've got the highest employment rate that we've ever had in a long time yeah. well so my whole point was, I think we're probably agreeing here, and I'm talking too much, so I'm going to shut up and let you talk. But my point was, Obama had all this flowery speeches about how you know his election was metaphorical for progress and all this and that. But at the end of the day, um, we, we were not better as a community of people after eight years of Obama. Trump, yeah. bull in the china shop, call him racist, okay, whatever, but... At the end of the day, he's doing stuff in two years for us that that I'm sorry, um, Obama didn't do. That's so that's where I'm at. Okay, so you you have the last word because I talk too much. No, it's all right, man. My my whole point was is um, I was raised very very similar. Um, obviously not under the very circumstances that you were uh, brought up as well. But my whole thing is like I was saying before is you know I agree with everything that you said. Um, I do feel that at a personal level, at an individualized level, um, we do need more strong character and stronger parenting like yourself had um, and, and I had to help us look at the injustices and look at the roadblocks and to say we need to be better and we need to get over these hurdles at a personal level. Um, but I agree with everything you said you know, prior to that, I just wanted to make sure that, you know, because the victimization is a cyclical and go to a downward spiral, you said, um, to say, well, everything's against me. I can't push beyond that. So I'm going to go do this. Well, yeah, I mean, and that, I mean, to me, and somebody can check me on this because it's, it's very possible. Cause like I said, it's very hard for me to be objective about Obama, but to me, It seemed to me like he was sympathizing a lot with, you know, we've had all this stacked against us. Tugging on the heartstrings. Yeah. And and like, meanwhile, there was like, okay, well, where's the beef? What are you what are you actually doing? Well, where's the infrastructure? (laughs) What are the what are the channels? How are we reversing this stuff? And I I didn't see it, you know, you you know, so I appreciate you taking the the time to uh, call me. I'm kind of getting a crappy connection here so i can barely hear you but uh thanks again i love you guys' channel and uh, you guys have a good night yeah much love to you my brother i appreciate you yep bye all right and with that folks i have to get out of here i said 15 minutes 30 minutes ago oh!